jeepers you're listening to smash or pass hello everybody welcome to another interview on the jbn millie channel i am jb and of course with me is millie hi and the special guest who will be interviewing today is scooby-doo collector world breaking scooby-doo collector the scooby-doo pastor john gifter thank you so much for joining us Hey, thank you so much for having me, guys. It's awesome to be with you today. Oh, that is incredible. I mean, obviously, we've known about you for a while and we've spoken a few times. We did that collaboration video. So it's absolutely amazing to get you here today to discuss everything and anything Scooby-Doo. And so when it comes to you and your journey, I'd like to go to the beginning, if that's OK with you. So, you know, how did you get into becoming a Scooby-Doo fan? And do you remember your first Scooby-Doo memory? Of course. Uh, so uh, when we grew up, I don't know about you in the UK, but in India, uh, we were the first generation that have a, grew up having television at home. OK, so it was a different uh, deal altogether. So the parents would say you can watch television for a maximum of an hour a day. So uh, they introduced me to Tom and Jerry that came at 6.30 p.m. and 7 p.m. was uh, what uh, I mean. Scooby-Doo, where are you? And I started watching Scooby-Doo and it was like love at first sight. And um, that's what I started with. And here I am with the first episode that I can remember uh, with uh, Captain Cutler, a clue for Scooby-Doo. That was the first episode that I can think of uh, watching Scooby-Doo. And uh, the journey began like that. And uh, I started falling in love with it in ways that I never imagined. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, like you said, I think for most people, Scooby-Doo was almost love at first sight. And is there something about, you know, the episodes that you watched that you think appealed to you the most and the reason why you fell in love with it so quickly? So uh, it's amazing to tell you a story in a very short span. Um, I started watching Scooby-Doo. It was just like any other show because I had Tom and Jerry and then Scooby-Doo. I was not able to uh, realize like what's better or worse or anything like that. And for some reason, I don't know what weird me, I started hating Scooby-Doo and I didn't watch Scooby-Doo for a few months. And uh, it so happened exactly at that point of time. Uh, I was in my second grade and uh, out of the blue, the... Uh, television stopped uh, showing Scooby-Doo and I don't know what happened. Maybe the, uh, you know, the one who started Scooby-Doo or someone died or something. That's what they told us. We didn't know back then uh, what was the back end story. And for three months, uh, they didn't showcase Scooby-Doo at all. That Scooby-Doo, every time Scooby-Doo's time came, something else would come. And you know what they say, right? Uh, you value something more when something is taken from you. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened to me. I started missing Scooby-Doo more and I started praying more that Scooby-Doo should come back. I don't know like anyone else who prayed for Scooby-Doo, but I did. Mm -hmm. And I used to cry so much like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. you know why this show went off and stuff like that. And then um, in India, so there were many of these uh, top uh, cricket players and all of them started uh, canvassing saying, you know, bring back Scooby-Doo, bring back Scooby-Doo. And uh, then Scooby-Doo came and uh, it was like, you know, finding your lost love again. It's kind of like that. And Scooby-Doo came in and I started falling in love with it more than ever before. And it's just been like a uh, crazy ride for me. Like I don't want to let go of it anymore. <laughs> That is a, that's fantastic, because I think that the word love is quite prominent when it comes to Scooby-Doo, because one thing that I always like to say is any given series and any given movie from Scooby-Doo could realistically be anyone's favourite, and I think that that's such an amazing part about Scooby-Doo. So for you personally, when you said that you missed it, you know, you don't know what you have until it's gone, when it did come back, were there any particular movies that you saw or series that really were your favourites? Uh, my favorite has always been uh, the uh, new the new Scooby Doo movies. Uh, the re main reason is because uh, I like comedy. I I myself do comedy too. That's another side. I have a John Gifted jokes page where I release a comedy video every week. Uh, so I I like silly jokes and I make silly jokes every. So and. Yeah, I'm able to relate a lot with Scooby-Doo, uh, especially in a new Scooby-Doo movies. Two of my favorites are Scooby-Doo meets uh, the Adams Family. And some of those lines are so classic, um, you know, missing one girl Wednesday and reward one ice cream Sunday. Or let's break bread on this uh, bread. Uh, 
you know, break our teeth on this bread. You know, when Lester says, you know, it's time for us to break bread. Or or even the one with uh, Laurel and Nadi. I really love these silly characters. And, you know, when they say, oh, have an accident. No, thank you. I just had one. So these are the jokes that I just go back to every other time when I feel, you know, low or I, I want something to, you know, like make myself feel happy again. I want to watch something silly. And uh, these have always been my favorites and I go back to them. Um, So I guess from there, in regards to favorite characters and things like that, again, did you lean more towards the comedy for your favorite characters or were some of the other gang really prominent for you? Uh, I guess in terms of favorite character, I guess... Um, I can't put my finger on one, but uh, the f- main fact is I don't like Velma because she's the intellectual one. <laughs> I don't like any intellectual folks. Uh, but I like Fred because he's a leader uh, and I could relate with him in that fact. But that also the fact that he's silly, like his pl- uh, plans and, um, you know, he says, OK, fine, you know, let's... Uh, uh, you know, do some, this, uh, create this trap, and then the trap doesn't work. You know, it, it's funny in that way. Um, so I like that part of, I like that a lot. And Daphne, of course, my crush. So uh, Daphne is something I, I always like. And and of course, Scooby-Doo, you know, who doesn't like Scooby-Doo? So uh, Scooby and Shaggy are always the comic characters that really help me the most. So I, I can't put my finger, finger on any one particular character, but if you were to say whom do you not like, I do it'll be easier for me to say, okay, I don't know that one. I think we might all be able to agree on that, surely. Yeah, I mean, I don't dislike it necessarily, but if there was someone that had to be given the boot, I wouldn't be um. upset if it was them. We'll just, we'll say that much. <laughs> But it is incredible to hear about that. Like, I, I I think even when they released the series called Velma, I think if uh, instead of Velma it was Daphne or Shaggy or Fred or anybody else, I think I would have liked it more. Yeah. yeah. Oh, imagine that. The nice purple logo got to come up. Daphne. And just, <laughs> gosh. I mean, it, it is really amazing to hear about that because I think, again, for all Velma's my least favourite, it sounds like Velma's everyone else's least favourite, at least on this call. Yeah. She is quite a popular character. And again, like I think every member of the Scooby gang could be someone's favourite, which I think yes. is amazing. And the way that you have become a Scooby-Doo fan and a Scooby-Doo collector really has spread across the internet. And I really do love hearing you and your positivity about everything. And, you know, it's not gone unnoticed, of course. You know, I know that your collection was... Uh, it appeared in the New Indian Express and the Sub Asian Continental Book of Records. So, what was it like to receive those accolades and really, you know, to be able to showcase how much of a collector that you are? So, um, it's been overwhelming, uh, to say the least, because uh, I think one of the exciting things for me, how it all started, was. Um, I mean, of course, here's the newspaper collection that I had when I was featured on the Indian Express. Uh, that was something that I never expected coming my way. And then this came up in 2021 uh, on a Bravo International Book of Records. This is another record. And uh, th- this is the latest one that I had, which came up for being decked with most number of Scooby-Doo items. This is the record that I received. So um, for me, the thing is, um, I just like collecting Scooby-Doo. I did, I, I, when I started, I just, uh, the first item that I ever received was this. This was a Scooby-Doo toothbrush that my uncle gifted to me when I was a kid. I never knew I was going to go into the field of collection, but uh, I just started collecting. And then I, uh, ever since I started earning, I was like, okay, you know what? I want to collect this, whatever I could didn't get when I was a kid. Um, I started collecting, collecting, collecting. And then uh, suddenly, out of the blue, uh, I get a mutual contact and the person was impressed with my Scooby-Doo collection and he was part of the Indian Express. And he's like, oh, why don't I feature you on Indian Express? And uh, that happened. And in 2021, when um, I was part of another world record for a Motivational Speakers Academy, um, and then the idea came, why not try for a record? Like, you know, uh, I, of course, I'm not trying to set a record of the largest collection. I think that's done by Danny in... Um, Canada, I think she has over 2,000 pieces. So I'm not here to compete or any of those th- stuff. But I'm like, okay, in my own unique way, what can I do? Something different. And I started collecting, doing something different. And uh, it's overwhelming to see these records. And um, it just makes me set apart from different people in that way. So I'm just grateful for all of that. I mean, honestly, your collection is incredible. And like you say, it's received praise from so many people. 
what advice would you give to people looking to either start a collection or grow the one that they have already is there a way you kind of keep track of everything that you do have because I think it's fair to say something that we find with Scooby-Doo is there's a lot of things that are different but very similar like for example the plushies there's so many Scooby plushies that just have very minor differences and things like that um I would always say, you know, start with what you can and uh, you never know how it's going to go. Like for me, I guess collecting has been in my genes. My uh, granddad collected stamps, my grandma collected coins, my brother collected, you know, the Justice League characters and then the Bob the Builder characters and now he's collecting Hot Wheels. So it's, I think it's just in my blood, but it's just that in my case, I I stuck to one, you know what I mean? Like instead of going for like okay you know when I finish Scooby Doo I go for something else no I stuck to one and I go deep and I I would really recommend like if someone wants to start collecting um start and go deep in one like you know find one niche like instead of collecting all the characters all the things like go for something in specific and 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 second advice I would say is I mean you don't need to compete with anyone else or anything of that sort. uh like i said i'm not competing to have the largest collection or what's it ever uh, for example you know if i say i've seen a lot of people in the us they have like all the pop collections of them and i have only one pop because my thing is one pop collect costs around 5000 indian rupees that's a lot of money <laughs> So if I were to uh, collect each of these items, some of them like the Scooby Doo chess piece, I can't bring it here, but I'll show the image of it. Um, I had to pay a huge sum just in the import tax and all of that. So I would say, you know, uh, you know, like it's a question of how much is too much for you. Like if you can't spend so much, don't spend so much. Uh, you know, you have your commitments, you have your stuff. So do what you can do and you don't have to compete with anyone else and um, even in terms of setting the record i never wanted to compete with someone like for example like i said uh dani or even i when i met to Br- uh, bendy bridge they've been collecting for like 40 years or you know they've been collecting from the previous generation whereas for me it's new and i'm in india like i have a lot of tax and a lot of things in what like uh, just to give you context um when i go had to get get the mystery machine um you know i had to spend two and a half times the amount of this machine just for the tax just to let you know so mm-hmm. that's how costly these things are so 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 don't compete with someone else but find your own unique thing that works for you and go for it See, I love that distinction that you made within setting a record, but not necessarily competing against another person. I think that that's such an important distinction to make because if there's one thing that you've definitely inspired me to look into, it's just a little bit of curiosity on what records have been set, what haven't been set. I was thinking. could i possibly weasel my way into some type of like indian thing with my heritage and i'm like probably not because i've never even set foot in the place and then i'm thinking has there been a uk or british record set again i'm not mm-hmm. sure but what would your advice be a little bit more specifically to people wanting to set a record see when you come to setting a record is i i would say um like i said you before you know you don't have to compete with someone else and you don't have to go into something that you can't do like i said practically speaking i when i converse with those in the us for example uh they say you know i just went to the thrift store and i was able to purchase a scooby doo item for me i go to comic con and i search uh last time when i went to comic con i guess you know i searched so much and finally found one scooby doo piece and i was like oh oh god i finally got one piece at least um for me it i understand that it's different so i would always give it in a very simple way you know um you know like think different be different and do different and when you do something that no one else has done before that's a record in itself so i would just say you know uh, like for example i mean if if you can't collect uh you know all the items you know maybe you can do something very specific like um maybe if no one else has collected all the pop figures of scooby doo in the uh, before maybe you can set a record of you know the one who has all the pop figures or uh, who has temporary tattoos you want to just set up so something like that like just think out of the box even i i had i do have plans like maybe uh, maybe after a year or two i want to do something with uh you know like i may even call you in and like you know maybe all the scooby fans together we can come up and set out a record i think there are a million ways of doing something it just comes down to just you know think different be different and do different and you will really see the difference and that's what i would say that's absolutely incredible advice a great idea because, about uh, collaboration like i well. said uh, 
when when I said this new record, um, sorry to interrupt you, but no, it, it just came from this idea of, you know, have you seen people setting the record of maximum number of bees up on their body? Have you seen that? Yeah, like, I used to read the yeah. Guinness Book of so, World Records at school and there's so many crazy ones that they've done. There's exactly. some, like, there's some so, insane records you'd never think of. I know one of my cousins used to get the World Book of Records every Christmas. That was their gift. Uh -huh. And there's just so many things in there that you wouldn't even there's think so to try There's so many different achieve. ideas. So that's exactly what happened. So when I saw like, okay, a person was covered with so many bees, I was like, okay, why can't I be covered with so many scoobies on my body? You know, that's that's how this idea got, 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 came into my mind. So I, I would say another uh, word of advice I would say in terms of this is, now the minute you think of a uh, world record, you only think of Guinness Book of World Records. Uh, but I got it from two different international books of world records. This is International Book of World Records. This, the other one is from the Bravo International Book of World Records. What I would say is, uh, you know, when we think about like, you know, doing engineering, I'm actually an aerospace engineer. Um, people would only know, you know, Oxford or Stanford, but, you know, there's there are universities near your home that have the accreditation to do the same. So if you can't go to, uh, you know, Guinness level of world record, you know, like Oxford level of engineering, just go to something else and, you know, uh, do what you can. There's something called recordsetters.com where you can just go uh, try things out and then they go through the verification process and then they do it. So there are different ways you can do it and you will feel happy and satisfied and you'll get a certificate that you can show off to your family and friends. Hey, I'm a world record holder. <laughs> that is absolutely incredible and just amazing. I'm really curious to see if that, like, could work out and definitely you know i'm looking forward to seeing people in the comment section you know wondering what records they could break i think it would be great to open that up as a community thing as well which is fantastic and of course you've mentioned stuff like funko pops being quite expensive i think personally one thing that i'm starting to get into now is everything by the handmade by robots the dvd collection box sets but is there any specific type of scooby-doo item that is your most favorite to collect at all so for me, uh, my approach has been like, uh, like I said, I don't want to have like, you know, a hundred uh, mm. pop collection alone. Like, you know what I mean? I want, uh, my approach has been like, I want something different each time. Like, you know, this is a Scooby-Doo here phone or a Scooby-Doo lanyard, you know, for an ID card uh, or Scooby-Doo uh, currency note. Ooh. I don't know if you've seen this. Um, or, you know, the Scooby-Doo flash drive or like i want each of my pieces like when you say for example this is my uh scooby of shades you know what i mean <laughs> you know so <laughs> they put it on so i want every piece that i have to be like different from the other like i have a scooby to wallet uh, which i carry on so i i I'm, every time i go out i always look for like what can I find something different? Like the other day I go and I see your Scooby snacks and I'm like, okay, this is something I can get for my doggy. So, you know, anything out of the ordinary, anything different is what I'm looking at. So instead of, uh, or even this one. Oh, yes. Yeah. Of the four of them. Uh, I want something different. I want something different each time. So that's what is my aim in terms of collecting. Instead of sticking to one, I want different stuff. So that makes it more interesting for me to collect. You found some amazing things and certainly things that we didn't even know existed. Is there anything that you've found perhaps while you were out and about that you just didn't expect to see and that it stands out to you as something that you really enjoyed finding or even any favorite items in your collection? I guess my favorite was always my flash drive, the Scooby-Doo flash drive. That is something that I never expected coming. Uh, and uh, I actually even lost it and I got it back and oh. I'm so grateful for that. <laughs> so uh, that is something I never expected. And and now even when I search anywhere, it's just not available anywhere. Uh, and this is something that I have a story of where uh, this is a Scooby-Doo statue that came. Um, I, I actually thought it lost it and that person actually canceled my order and it took me eight months to re uh, get this piece. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Uh, so every time when I look at these uh, stuff, it, even this this one is something I never expected. You know what this is? Is it a 3D printer, a 3D printed model? Yeah, reference? but this is actually a headphone holder. Oh, 
wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you can set, keep your headphone like this. Maybe I can give you an image of how the headphone is set on yeah. this. So this is a headphone holder. So uh, this is the way I want something unique. And when I see it, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. I can just hug it. <laughs> so that's how I look at every piece, how it is different. And yeah. Oh, wow, that is amazing. Like I said, so many things that we've not seen or didn't even know existed. I mean, honestly, it is incredible how you've managed to find what you have. Are there any items that you're still looking to get? Is there anything you've seen that you most want to find? Um, I would always uh, been wanting some of those. Uh, yeah, one of the things I've been wanting for a long time is a Scooby-Doo watch. Uh, for some reason, I'm still not getting it. I ordered it on eBay and it got cancelled again. Uh, it's not reaching India. So a lot of things like that. Um, watch is one, one thing that I've been really longing to get. <laughs> because uh, from head to toe, everywhere I have Scooby-Doo, but my watch alone is, of course, I'm proud of my watch, but still, I would love for it to be Scooby-Doo too. <laughs> Yeah, that would be amazing. There's a lot of things that, like, you, you know, I think every collector kind of has their own, you know, the holy grail of what they would want to collect. I think that's just absolutely fantastic. And, you know, there's a lot of things that people collect. For instance, you know, right now we've got our Scooby room, but there's also other fandoms that we're interested in, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Animal Crossing, Super Mario, you name it. But we haven't necessarily set up a page dedicated to showing that collection to the world. And so we've not really opened ourselves up to that fandom. But with you opening up a Scooby account, of course, the Scooby Pasta, showcasing your love for Scooby and opening yourself up to the community. At what point did you go from Scooby-Doo fan and collector to someone that wanted to connect with other Scooby-Doo fans and collectors? Uh, it, I I guess it was in 2019 when I uh when I was featured on the New Indian Express and I was like, oh my gosh, there's so many uh communities out there, so many people who love Scooby Doo, and um, I mean, since we are talking about this, I just remembered um these were the earliest of collections that I have, like from all the things that they used to collect for free back then, you know, these tattoos and these are like 25 years old or something like that. Um, and and here's another one where you could actually see um, all the, uh, how the Scooby-Doo website used to look back then. Like, you know, if somebody wants to remember how they look, I have all of these images. And there's another book, maybe I'll share the images uh, with you from the book, where I was in probably in my second grade of schooling. And I wrote down every time Scooby-Doo used to move. Uh, appear on uh, TV. I have all the times like, okay, you know, it used to come at, uh, you know, 12 p.m. It used to come at 3.30 p.m. You know, it's it's been that way. Like I had that personal journey with Scooby-Doo uh, and uh, it also went to the fact that I've uh, written lots of uh, stories based on Scooby-Doo that you can see. So these are all like my stories from like, you know, I don't know. I'm sure you can't read them from here, but I've written like lots and lots of stories from the time I was in my school days. And I'm hoping someday I want to uh, publish them into books as well. Um, and and uh, the main idea is because I wrote written stories like Scooby-Doo on the Titanic or mashup between, you know, Scooby-Doo and Home Alone and <laughs> stuff like that. So it's, it, it's, it's, it's a way of me expressing myself. And when I released my second book last, uh, about a year or two ago, I don't know if anyone else has done this, but I released my book and uh, dedicated it to Scooby-Doo. So I guess I would be the first one to do that. Uh, so for me, my heart has been like, you know, uh, I have such a bond with this character and uh, there are so many people uh, who have their own stories with Scooby-Doo and it's amazing to connect with them and, you know, talk about it. And, you know, you're connecting with people all over the world and it's it's a global thing. And I just love doing that. And I guess this is a great opportunity and I'm grateful for that. Mm -hmm. because you've really got a personal touch with your things which is absolutely amazing because we've spoken about your page the scooby pastor and obviously you know having known you and spoken with you something that really does shine across is that faith and that positivity that you like to spread and i think that's absolutely wonderful so where did the name scooby pastor come from and do you have any particular goals for the future of that page yeah, so as I don't know if you can see my T-shirt, it's actually Scooby-Doo. It's a custom-made T-shirt of 
Uh, and it comes from a scene from this uh, new Scooby Doo movie, season two, episode one, where Scooby and Shaggy are praying. And there's a line above it saying, you know, prayer changes things. So for me, anything I do, uh, I always want to help people, encourage people, either either through motivation or the Christian stuff, or even through my comedy, because a lot of times people say, I had a very stressful day and your joke just made my day. So either ways, I want to make the world a better place, you know, in different ways possible. If they're in the same faith, in a different way, if they're from a different faith, uh, still encourage and bring positivity. Um, you, you know, that's how I come up with stuff like, you know, even a pocket calendar like this. And then, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and just a word of encouragement. Like, I, I just look for different ways in which I can help people and encourage people. And that's where uh, the fact that, okay, I'm a preacher, so the word pastor comes in everywhere. I get this opportunity, like uh, as we are speaking uh, yesterday, I got a chance to uh, speak to the kids in my church. They asked me to do a Scooby-Doo themed uh, voiceover session, like, you know, uh, with my Scooby-Doo characters. And they were all like excited. Oh my gosh, I didn't see Scooby-Doo in the church, but it said, it, you know, that's a unique approach where I'm able to use Scooby-Doo uh, and bring out life lessons. Like, you know, there's so many things that we can um, come up with. Uh, just give me a second. Um, Okay. Like this, for example, if you look at the bobblehead, I would immediately say, okay, you know, what's the lesson that we can learn from it? You know, with every uh, wind, it's weighing so much. And I would just say, you know, there'll be winds of opinions of people, but you should not sway for every one of them. So a life lesson with Scooby-Doo, uh, with a Scooby-Doo item. Like that, anything that I take, like even this, the minute you think of the mystery machine, you know, you're, it points to Scooby-Doo, even though you don't see Scooby-Doo anywhere. So when people think of you, who are you pointing towards? You know, a point of influence. So a life lesson for us to learn. So my heart has been that through this page or through my uh, whatever I do with my credentials of being a world record holder, I just want to help people, encourage people. Because if you just tell people, you know, I, I love Scooby-Doo and, you know, I made a video, watch it. People are really like, oh, okay, it's okay. I won't go to watch that. But, you know, when you say I'm a world record holder and I've had this video, so they may want to pay attention to what you've got to say. So I just want to use those tools to just help people. And that's my intention. That's amazing. And certainly, you know, you do have great positivity. It sounds like you've had some really interesting moments as well since starting your collection. And are there any that are your favourites or that stand out to you? I know you were saying there about, you know, um, being able to bring the Scooby collection and, you know, speak to other people and how it can help with life lessons. Are there any particular posts or videos you've done that stand out to you as something that's really memorable? Uh, I just love, I mean, when I do, especially these voiceover, right? Groovy doobie, you know, Scooby. So I, I, I generally, even when I do my talks, I, I do use comedy. I change my voice every now and then. Like, and, and when I do with the Scooby Doo, I just feel like I come alive. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, especially when you're little kids or even, uh, when I do sessions in different places, uh, and, even in my workplace or anywhere, people just call me either Scooby or the Scooby boy or Scooby pastor, or, you know, any Scooby-Doo related name. And I, I just love that fact that, uh, you know, I'm able to use that. So I can't think of any one particular thing, but I, I can probably share images of different things that I've done, uh, ventures uh, through which I'm able to help people and motivate them. That is absolutely amazing. And can I ask, do you have any upcoming things happening in relation to Scooby, be that goals that you have with your collection, plans for content, or like you say, other events that you can do to bring Scooby to other people? Uh, I guess, like I said, I just want to, I'm not able to put in my, um, I work in a full-time job and I have the you know, the Christian content on one side, plus the other stuff that I do. Uh, so I have a lot on my face. So I'm not even to commit to, you know, like everyday kind of posts, but every now and then I'm just trying to keep the page alive uh, with some, you know, Scooby-Doo thing. And then, I, but I basically am waiting for the right opportunity and moment when I can uh, make content on a regular basis. I want to take these photos with really good co quality uh, because I'm a, I'm a guy of quality. Uh, I don't want to start with bad quality. <laughs> you know, I, like first impression is the best impression and I don't want that to happen. So uh, it only uh, only if the quality of the post or the photo is really good, I want to post it. So that's something that's keeping me from, you know, going full-fledged on it. 
Uh, but I'm just hoping at the right time I'm able to come up with, like I said, these these ideas with the bobblehead and stuff. I just want to just put them out there whenever I get time and, um, you know, whoever follows the page, they will be able to be benefited through them. That's wonderful. And where is the best place for people watching to keep up with that work? I guess uh, right now I would recommend uh, the Instagram page called Scooby Pastor if you're only serious about the Scooby-Doo stuff that I do. Uh, but I do have a main page, John Gifta, but that will include everything that I do. You know, the, the Scooby-Doo, the Christian stuff, my motivation and everything. So you can come up there and then Fifi, or you want to follow my jokes, that's another page, John Gifta Jokes. So people follow me for different things that they like about me. So it's up to you on what you want to follow me for. That's incredible. We'll be sure to leave those in the description down below. And that does conclude all the questions that we have for you today. But just thank you so, so much for joining. And it's just been an absolute pleasure to talk to you today. Same here. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, thank you. <laughs> oh, that's such that's a great nice way to end it. it. <laughs> oh, it's absolutely incredible i definitely love that and i know that a lot of people watching this will have loved that too so thank you to everyone for watching it's been absolutely incredible to be able to share another episode with everyone if you do want to see more then please like comment i guess since i've done this well you can just give me this medal and say well done john Ooh. <laughs> it's just <to> be the <laughs> isn't that what you want to do i think so is that one of the conquer ones <laughs> you got <gasps> Did no, I'm I'm looking into doing it. I checked and it was like like you should do it pounds. too before they kick us off. <laughs> Ooh, you know what? That, that's you know what? That's the, probably a, that's good, a better way to end it because now I'm like now we've got goals. We now we're in the future. So that's <laughs> amazing. So yeah, stay in tune for that and we will see you next time.